Hi, and welcome to this video of Dynamics 365 Talk, where I'll be talking about using calculated fields to track warranty on customer assets. But before we get going, I just wanted to go ahead and introduce myself real quick. My name is Dion Taylor. You can take a look at my blog at d365goddess.com or follow me on Twitter at d365goddess. Now, most of you probably know that we can configure whether or not a work order product needs to be turned into a customer asset when a field technician consumes a work order product. So this is great functionality, but what if we needed to track if that customer asset was still under warranty or not? And this could come in handy when we're performing service on that asset. So in this video, I'm going to configure the application to track two different types of warranty on customer assets. One to track their labor associated to when the asset was installed and one type of warranty related to the part that was installed. So this is kind of what that's going to look like. You can see here we're tracking the warranty status of the labor associated to the customer asset and the product itself. Now let's take a look at the configurations for that. So we're going to have some new fields on the product entity and the customer asset entity. On the product entity, we're going to add two whole number fields. Um, as you can see, I'm going to call them warranty labor duration and warranty part duration. And these fields represent the number of days that we're going to give warranty on each of those items. So we can have uh, a particular amount of days uh, of warranty on the labor that's performed when a particular customer asset was installed. And we can also have warranty on the part itself. So think about maybe we're installing an HVAC unit, right? And the actual HVAC unit itself, which is that part, right? Or product that could have maybe a year of warranty on it but the actual labor related to that installation could be shorter, right? Maybe we're only going to have 90 days or 30 days um, of that warranty related to that labor. Then on the customer asset entity, we're going to need to create a field that is actually going to keep track of how many days have passed since that installation. So that's the days since install, which is a calculated whole number field. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the created on field, which we're going to rename to installed on. And that's the field we're going to use to calculate how many days have passed since that customer asset was installed. Then we're going to have two additional fields and those are the actual warranty status fields, one for labor and one for parts. Uh, again, it's a Boolean field. We have two options under warranty or warranty expired. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the warranty duration and we're going to compare that to how many days have passed since the installation date and then deciding on that whether something is still on the warranty or not. So let's take a look. Here I have, as you can see, the two different entities. The product entity is in orange and the customer asset entity is in blue. So you can see on the product entity, I'm going to have two new fields, warranty labor duration days and warranty part duration days. And then I'm going to rename my created on field to installed on. And again, those warranty duration days, that's really where we're going to set how many days um, the labor is going to be on the warranty and the part or the product is going to be on the warranty. Then on the customer asset entity, we're going to have a days since install field. And what that's going to be, it's actually going to be the difference between the installed on date, which is the created on date, and today's date. That's the amount of days that have passed. Then we have the labor warranty status. So basically what that does is it's going to look at the warranty labor duration days field in the product entity. 
and it's going to compare that to the days since install date on my customer asset entity. If the warranty labor duration field is greater than or equal to days since install, we're going to set that field to under warranty. Otherwise, we're going to set that to warranty expired. And then the last one works exactly the same way. This is just for the product, right? For the actual um, product itself. If the number in the warranty part duration field is greater than or equal to days since install, again, it's looking at that date since install field. And then based on that, it's going to set it either to be under warranty or warranty expired. Okay, let's take a look at how we're going to configure this in the application. So I just navigated to make.powerapps.com and I'm going to go expand my data and then my entities. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to my products entity. Let's reset that filter real quick products here it is and I'm just going to show you the fields that I added obviously you can just go ahead and click add field directly from here but I've already created those fields so I'm just going to show you what that looks like and here they are so here's the first one warranty labor duration and here we have warranty part duration. Both are, as you can see, a whole number field. So let's just go ahead and open that up. So you can see, obviously you can put in your minimum values. Um, you probably set this to zero and whatever that maximum value we want to set that to. Uh, you can see it's very simple. The data type is a whole number. You can set whether or not it is a searchable field. And then you can just go ahead and save that. So my part duration is exactly the same. Also, it's going to be a whole number field, as you can see. Again, you can set your minimum and your maximum values, and then you can just go ahead and you can, you can publish that. You can also add that to your form. Just go ahead. Just go ahead and open our product form. And here is our product form and as you can see I actually added this section it's called warranty and then I can just drag those fields that I just created onto the form and of course you want to make sure that you go ahead and you save that and you publish that and now we can go ahead and move on to the customer assets. Okay, so let's go back to entities and let's search for customer asset. And here we are. Zoom in a little bit. <coughs> So the first thing that we want to do is change the name of the created on field. We're going to call that installed on. And we're going to just go ahead and click on done. Then you can see that I actually created a days since install field, which is a whole number. So let's take a look at that. I'm just going to go ahead and open that up. As you can see, it is a whole number field, and you can see here that it's actually a calculated field as well. So if I want to take a look at that calculation, let's just go ahead and save that. So here we have that configuration. You can see here our action is to set the days since install that set this field to the difference in days between today's date and the created on field or 
right? Because that's really that field that we just renamed to installed on. So that's all you have to do. Like I said, you can basically start typing this in and then you can select that from the drop down. So let me show you. You can see here a diff, different than days, and then you can put on in create it on. And then we want to, there you go. So that's kind of how you do that. And then you can just hit that checkbox and that's what that looks like. So that was the day since installed. Then we want to actually put those labor warranty status and part warranty status fields on those as well. And those are identical, right? We're just having them look at different fields for those calculations. So we can see here again, this is a two options or Boolean field. We have two different values in there. One is under warranty and one is warranty expired. And as you can see, this is also a calculated field. So let's take a look at that. So here are our conditions. If the warranty labor duration days field on the product entity is greater than or equal to the day since install field on the customer asset, then set that labor warranty status field to on the warranty. Right, and then we have an else if, if the warranty labor duration days field on the product entity is less than day since install, then set that labor warranty status to warranty expired. And you can kind of see here, if I click on this, this is asking me which entity am I looking for? So you can see that with these calculated fields, you can actually have the system check fields on related entities and then you can do a comparison. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm looking at the warranty labor, as you can see, duration field on the product entity. And I'm comparing that to a field on the current entity, which is that day since install field. And then as you can see here, I can have actions being performed on that. So again, this is that warranty labor, right? And then we're setting the labor warranty status field. So if we're looking, let me actually go ahead and go now to the part warranty status. Let's see here. Oops. Or product warranty status, whatever we want to call it. Again, we can see that that is also a Boolean under warranty, warranty expired. And again, we can see here we have the default value and we can open that calculation. Very similar, right? We're again, now we're just looking at the warranty part duration days field on the product entity. If that is greater or equal to days since install, set that to be on the warranty. If the warranty part duration is less, then the day since install, then set that product warranty to warranty expired. And again, right, I'm looking at my product entity. Here's my field on my product entity. If that is less than the field on my current entity, customer asset, day since install field. So that's how we do that. So now let's take a look at a customer asset record in Dynamics 365. <clears throat> And I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So we're currently here looking at a customer asset. You can see that here. It's called the heat and cooling plate. And if I scroll down, you can see a couple of things here. You can see the work order that it's related to when it was installed, what the cost and the total price was uh, that we charge our customer, what our cost was. And if I scroll down, it's actually telling me it was installed on 6-10-2019. The days that have passed since then is 202. And because you can see here, the warranty is expired because it's looking at, right? Remember this 202. Let me actually go to that product. Here we go. It's saying we have 90 days see warranty labor duration is 90 days and the warranty part duration is 180 days 
and we just saw we were on day 202. Now, what if I actually change this, let's say 205 days, or we can even say 365 days on the part. I'm going to save that. And I'm gonna go back to my customer asset. Let's take a look now. You can see here that it actually just updated it that now the product is under warranty because there's 365 days on that part warranty and only 202 has have passed. Now obviously you can take this a step further and also create a view to show customer assets and the related warranty information on the account record. And that would look something like this. As you can see, here are my assets on my A Datum Corporation account. And if I scroll here, I can see the actual installation date, the day since install, what the actual warranty duration is. You can see here in 90 days. And then I can also see the labor warranty status has expired on this particular one and the product is still under warranty, right? So this is a nice way to kind of show that warranty information directly on that account form or we can configure or we can configure the field service mobile app. Let me just go ahead and navigate to my A Datum Corporation and we can see here scroll down a little bit further all of our customer assets you can see whether or not the product warranty has expired the labor warranty has expired the installation dates etc so again this could be very helpful if we actually have a work order related to a customer asset right we can immediately see if that item is still on the warranty I hope you enjoyed this video if you do give it a like and this is going to be the last video for 2019, so I wanted to wish everybody a very happy and healthy new year. And I'll see you guys next year.